Muzan Kibutsuji As the very first demon, Muzan Kibutsuji is the villain to Tanjiro Kamado and the Demon Slayer Corps. Muzan has been murdering and turning people into demons since the Heian period and the number of his victims is uncountable. He was also the man that killed the protagonist, Tanjiro Kamado's family, and turned his sister, Nezuko, into a demon. His image of ruthlessness and domination fits well with his final boss position. Today, we'll be looking at Muzan's life and take a deep dive into his past. We'll figure out why Muzan became a demon in the first place and some of the evil things he did. So, stick around till the end. Warning, spoilers ahead. Continue at your own risk. Muzan's Birth Muzan Kibutsuji's human name was never revealed, but the head of the Demon Slayer Corps, the Ubayashiki family, have the same ancestors as him, and he was born in a noble family during the Heian period. Muzan was born so weak, he was initially mistaken as a stillborn. And even after clearing the misunderstanding, he was told his sickly body wouldn't let him live to 20. In charge of Muzan's medical care was a nice doctor. The doctor tried everything to make Muzan feel better. But after countless attempts with no results, Muzan killed him out of irritation and frustration. Muzan's short temper and violent habits haven't changed since then. But killing the doctor was probably Muzan's biggest mistake. After the murder, Muzan found out that his body was stronger thanks to turning into a demon, but as a price, he could no longer walk under the sun. The only one who knew how to overcome this secret, the only one who knew about the blue spider lily, was the doctor he had killed. This was how Muzan began his long, long journey in search of perfection. He perfected the art of disguise, securing funds as a man, gathering daylight information as a geisha, and ensuring a place to make medicine as a child, all while searching for the blue spider lily. From how he was reading foreign books, it wasn't like he was sitting as a top demon without putting in the effort, and you can see how hard he was working to gather information. It must have been hard living like this for hundreds of years. Muzan's extreme obsession with life has to come from how close to death he was as a human. When he said, I am a perfect creature that is infinitely close to perfection, it was almost like he was trying to convince himself. That's because when he got bothered by a group of drunkards in Asakusa, and one of them commented on his pale skin. He sent that quote as he killed them. If he was truly strong and confident in himself, he wouldn't bother with dealing with a couple drunkards. On the contrary, we could clearly see him in denial of his weak self and impatient to become a truly perfect being. Muzan's Dark Past Muzan increased his field of influence and power by turning people into demons with his blood and taking control over them. Muzan did everything he could to prevent betrayal, keep his underlings from rebelling in groups, and his personal information from getting leaked. Not only did he keep a close eye on their every move, he put a curse on them that would kill them if they ever even said his name. While the number of demons increased by the day, the Ubuyashiki family banded together the Demon Slayer Corps out of regret for creating the first demon, and their fateful battle would continue for generations. Several hundred years after Muzan became a demon, he would eventually have to battle the demon hunting organizations Yorichi Sugikuni. Yorichi was a sun breathing user and his physical abilities were much stronger than most but because Muzan had turned his twin Michikatsu Sugikuni into a demon not longer prior, he didn't see Yorichi as much of a threat. However, once the battle began, all of Muzan's attacks were parried and his neck refused to heal after being sliced by Yorichi's bright red Nichirin blade. Muzan knew he was going to lose and he killed his shame as he divided himself to flee. To Muzan, who thought sunlight was the only way he could be defeated, nearly losing to Yorichi must have been terrifying. The experience was so traumatizing, the memory continued in the corner of his mind and came up from time to time. After that battle, until Yorichi's death, Muzan went into hiding and refused to do anything. After Yorichi's death, Muzan went around with Kokoshibo to kill all sun breathing users, securing his safety, and went back to increasing the number of demons as he looked for a way to overcome the sun. In the Edo period, Muzan created the 12 Kizuki system with his underlings and made an elite organization with Kokoshibo at the top. The demons made joining the 12 Kizuki their goals to please Muzan, following orders to kill demon slayers and searching for the blue spider lily. So it's safe to say this system was a success. Attacking the Kamado family 
Muzan lived as a demon from all the way back to the Heian period, but one day in the Taisho era, he decided to attack the Kamado family. Tanjiro was away that day, but his mother and siblings were all home. Only Nezuko survived, and she was turned into a demon. In other words, if Muzan didn't attack the Kamado family, Tanjiro would have never joined the Demon Slayer Corps, and Muzan would still be creating terror. This was the worst thing Muzan could have done to himself. By the way, his decision to attack the Kamado family could be connected to the blue spider lily hunt. He definitely had demons searching for him, but he was also looking for the blue spider lily himself. From how the attack on the Kamado family played out, we can theorize that Muzan figured out that the blue spider lily was somewhere near Tokyo. The Kamado family lived near Tokyo, even if they were in the mountains. So, location-wise, it's not possible to think that Muzan came to look for the blue spider lily. However, spider lilies bloom in late September, so for him to come in the middle of winter might mean he was just taking a look around. It also seems like he was attempting to create a demon that could overcome sunlight. From Nezuko's memories, we can confirm that Muzan said, I guess I really can't create a demon that can conquer the sun. Muzan theorized that other than the blue spider lily, a way for him to conquer the sun is by creating a demon that can, and absorbing it for its powers. He then found a secluded house in the middle of the mountains, and because he could make it seem like a bear that couldn't hibernate attack them, he tried out his theory on them. If this is true, then Muzan simply attacked the Komado family as a side plan to his blue lily search. So there was no reason that it had to be the Komado family. It was actually revealed that Tanjiro's mother, Kie, knew about the blue spider lilies in the official fan book. Just from results alone, we can figure out that attacking the Kamado family was a terrible idea for Muzan. That's because he killed Kie before asking her if she knew about the blue spider lilies. She probably had no idea they were linked with demons, so if she was asked, she would have just normally answered that she'd seen them before. If he was looking for the blue spider lilies, even if it wasn't for Kie, he should have asked about them before killing them. Muzan's habit of looking down on human life and killing without hesitation hurt him pretty badly in this case. Until the final battle. By attacking the Kamado family, Muzan's slow life took a massive turn. Nezuko, the demon who managed to avoid Muzan's curse, joined the Demon Slayer Corps. Tanjiro, who coincidentally had learned sun breathing through his family's Kagura, also began defeating demons as a demon slayer. The more the siblings grew, the more demons were getting defeated. It wasn't just the weaker demons or the lower ranks, but even the upper ranks who managed to keep their positions for over a century ended up defeated. Muzan hated change. So when the members of the 12 Kizuki were defeated, he was furious. However, on the other hand, shortly after Tanjiro defeated upper rank 4, Hantengu, Nezuko overcame the sun and gave Muzan the chance of a lifetime to have his wish granted. If I can absorb Nezuko, I can conquer the sun and finally become perfect. Thinking this, Muzan might have gotten a bit too excited. Almost as if to declare war, he pinpointed where the head of the Demon Slayer Corps, the Ubuyashiki family was, and decided to pay them a visit. He might have wanted to take a look at the Ubuyashiki family that chased him around for generations and end their bloodline. But this visit was another one of his biggest mistakes. Kagaya had predicted Muzan's visit, so he planned to turn the tables around by setting up traps, having Tamayo on standby nearby with drugs, and planning to self-explode. Instead of making the trip himself, Muzan could have just sent one of the upper ranks in his place. Muzan wanting to go all out to absorb Nezuko makes some sense, but there was no need to gather the entire Demon Slayer core in the Infinity Castle and have them battle with the upper ranks. It was thanks to that that multiple Demon Slayers were able to go up against one upper rank at a time, resulting in all of the upper ranks being defeated. Even if they had to be in the Infinity Castle for some reason, if Muzan made the strategy using new upper rank 4 Nakime to keep one pillar against one upper rank, then the results would have been very different. The Final Battle
After losing all of the upper ranks, Muzan had to fight the Demon Slayer Corps alone. Of course, his power was incredible, and he was able to push the Demon Slayer Corps close enough to make us think they could lose. However, thanks to Tamayo's drugs, Tanjiro's sun breathing, the pillar's combined strengths, and the sunrise time limit, Muzan had no escape route and was defeated. The emotions of all the people Muzan undermined up until now exceeded his expectations, leaving him crushed underneath. Without him ever achieving his perfect form, literal death took his life away. However, he squeezed his last bit of energy to turn Tanjiro into a demon. That's because he was the brother of the demon that conquered the sun, was a sun-breathing user, and was the man that had everything Muzan didn't. So Muzan passed on his wishes onto Tanjiro. Tanjiro became an undying demon, in other words, the perfect being, thereby fulfilling Muzan's lifelong dreams. The wills of the people that were trying to defeat him were unbeaten and Muzan's tears were now proof that he now believed Kagaya's words, only human feeling lasts forever, and are undying. It looked like Muzan changed his values at the very end, but pushing his desires onto Tanjiro was just out of selfish greed, and his lack of remorse or regret for all the things he did to others was just like him. Even during his final scenes, none of his underlings showed up. Tanjiro was forced to become a demon, rebelled against his instincts thanks to Nezuko's blood and Kanao Suyuri's drug. Muzan provokes him by asking if he was the only one that gets to survive, but his fallen friends and family guide Tanjiro back to his world, and he gets back his human self. To Muzan, who only thought about himself and used others as food or pawns, this sight was unbelievable. Tanjiro had lots of people helping him out, but Muzan was alone till the very end, even if it was totally deserved. Him wailing, don't leave me behind, as he tried to cling onto Tanjiro, had no dignity behind it. It was nothing Nothing more than miserable. Muzan would continue to be talked about as an infamous final boss not for being the perfect being he desired, but for his consistent obsession over life. That's all for Muzan's intense life. Unlike the other demons, Muzan didn't have a single moment that we could sympathize with. Muzan was a model villain, being both mentally and physically strong as well as being incredibly self-centered and unreasonable. Muzan was inhumane through and through, and his low empathy was mentioned in the official fan book. You've all survived. That should be enough for you. You can't bring dead humans back to life. These quotes prove that the fan book is true. Sure, not being able to bring people back to life is plain logic, but it's shocking that the cause of all the deaths said that without a drop of remorse. This might be how the official fanbook concluded him to be similar to a bug. Even so, he was also said to be good at reading people's negative emotions, which made him even worse to deal with. Muzan's blood demon techniques consist of tentacles and strong shockwaves, so he's a strong attacker. But if he had any that affected the mind, even Yorichi might have had a hard time. What do you think of Muzan's intense past? If you have any thoughts on Muzan's intense life and turning points or his obsessions for life, let us know in the comments section down below. Thanks for watching. We have more amazing videos coming up, so subscribe to get notified when the next one comes. We'll see you next time.